Let's talk about housing affordability, something that's been a thorn in the side for so many families for so long. While it's always been tough for some to buy a home, recent trends have made it even harder. Mortgage rates have been bouncing around, and even though they're recently dipping below 6.5%, it's still not easy for most Americans to afford a home. In today's video, I'm gonna break down the latest trends in housing affordability, and I'm gonna help you figure out who can actually afford to buy a home right now. Housing affordability isn't just about what's happening today. It's tied to the broader economic picture. For example, back in the late 70s and early 80s, the economy was in rough shape. Trust me, I was there. Inflation hit 14% and mortgage rates skyrocketed to 17% by 1981. Sound familiar? Not for a lot of you, but for me it sure does. Fast forward to 2023 and we've seen mortgage rates hit 7% on average after the Federal Reserve raised rates to combat inflation. This has pushed home ownership out of reach for many, just like it did back then. To understand what's going on with housing affordability, we need to look at two key metrics, the housing affordability index and the payment to income ratio. The housing affordability index, or the HAI, is a measure that compares the median family income to what's needed to buy a median priced home. A score of 100 means a family earning a median income can just about afford a median priced home with a 20% down payment. But when that number dips below 100, things are getting tight. Looking back, housing affordability hit a record low in 2023 with an HAI of 98.2. This means that the average American family wasn't making enough to comfortably afford a median priced home. Compare this to 2012 when mortgage rates and home prices were lower and families could afford homes nearly twice the median price. But with mortgage rates now falling below 6.5, affordability has slightly improved, giving some families a chance to get back into the market. Now, if you're a first time home buyer, it's even a steeper climb. First time buyers typically earn less and the HAI reflects that. As of the second quarter of this year, first time buyers could only afford homes priced 38% lower than the median. This shows just how hard it's become for new buyers to enter the market. The payment to income ratio is another critical metric. It tells us how much of a typical family's income goes towards the mortgage payments. Historically, families spent about 18.5% of their income on their mortgage, but in 2023, that number shot up to 25.4%, meaning the average family was efficiently cost burden. For first-time buyers, the situation is even worse. They're spending 40% of their income on mortgage payments, which is way above the 25% threshold. This shows just how difficult it is for first-time buyers to get back into that market, just like I said before. So, who can actually afford to buy a home today? The reality is not many. Right now, only one in three households can afford to purchase a median price home without spending more than that 25% of the income on mortgage payments. Compare that to 2021, when 55% of households could afford a home, or 2019, when it was nearly 60%. This decline means that since 2021, about 28.4 million households have been priced out of the market. And if we go back to 2019, 30.4 million households were now unable to afford a median priced home. For first time buyers, the situation is even more dire. Only 17% of renters can afford to buy a median priced starter home today. That's a steep drop from 2021 when 37% of renters could afford to make the leap to home ownership and an even bigger drop from 2019 when 42% could. The implications of this affordability crisis are huge. Home ownership has long been a key way for Americans to build wealth as home values typically appreciate over time. Over the last decade, homeowners gained more than $200,000 in wealth from rising home values. But when people are priced out of the market, they miss out on this opportunity. Instead of building equity, they're stuck paying rent, which doesn't contribute at all to their financial future. So where does this leave us? While recent drops in mortgage rates offer some hope, the path to home ownership is still steep for many. If rates continue to fall, we might see some relief, but for now, the dream of owning a home remains out of reach for millions of Americans, and that's just the sad truth. By the way, if you're looking to move anywhere in the country and you're lucky enough to be able to buy and you're looking for someone who can help you there, send me a text or an email. We can help with that. I'm part of a network that spans the United States.
If you're getting value from my videos and you want to be the first to learn about the change of real estate market, hit subscribe and tap the bell. That'll help both of us. Thanks so much. See you later. Talk to you soon. Thank you.